Hey, welcome everybody. This is Mike Dana here with you uh, for a Jazz Education Abroad workshop on the guitar. And we're going to be focusing uh, for the next few minutes on the major scale. At the end of this video, what you should be able to do with some practice is to play all uh, of your major scales, all 12 keys, in every position on the guitar neck, which is pretty cool. So. Uh, there's a PDF that you have um, that you've downloaded and I want you to take a look at that and you'll see that there are five different fingering patterns for these major scales. Now if you have a private teacher maybe you've learned these before uh, this is the way that I learned these fingering patterns at the Berklee College of Music it's a great system there are other systems that are great too so if you have a private teacher and a system where you're able to play all the scales with, uh, with, with some fluency in different parts in the neck and know where you're at at all times, then maybe you could skip this part, okay? But if you don't feel solid in that, then this is for you. So let's get started. First thing, uh, these are movable uh, scale patterns. So in other words, they do not use any open strings. And that way, if I can play something in the key of G right there, I can move it up and play it in other keys let's say A flat right there, which is a really good thing. Some people teach these using the, the term caged, C-A-G-E-D, because there's a position that looks like a C chord and a position that looks like a G chord and so on. I'm not a fan of that, and the reason is that G fingering, let's say, is not always in the key of G, it, it, depending on where you're playing it on the neck. So I have a different system that I've developed that I like more that I'm going to suggest that we use. And it uh, basically, here's the deal. Uh, the scales are going to begin either on the sixth string, the low E string, or the fifth string, the, uh, the A string. So the scales are going to be called six something or five something based on the string that they begin on. And then scales uh, in the Berkeley system tend to begin on the second finger of your left hand, that's this finger, or the fourth finger, that's your pinky, and in one instance, your first finger. So the scale that begins here, which is the first one on your handout, the G major scale, is, uh, in my terminology, in this position, I'm just going to call it the 6-2. Why do I call it that? Because I begin on the sixth string with my second finger. If I begin a scale on this, what would I call that? 6-4, six, 6 string 4th finger. This would be the 5-2 scale, and so on. And all these are in the, the PDF that you've downloaded. The other part of the Berkeley system that's kind of cool is that we're learning our scales across the neck this way. So we're going we're gonna, to, in another video, we're going to talk about going uh, vertically up and down the neck this way, but for right now, we're going to be focusing on what we call position playing. And the idea there is pretty simple. You have one finger that is covering, so to speak, each fret. So any notes in this area of the guitar neck, I have a finger that's always going to play that fret. So in other words, the second fret is always going to be covered by my first finger and the third fret by my second finger and so on. By the way, this is referred to as the second position because my first finger is basically based on the second fret. This would be fifth position because this is the fifth fret. Pretty easy stuff. Okay. The other thing is uh, in the Berkeley system, we try not to repeat a finger on a scale because you'll be a lot more fluid if you're not repeating fingers. Um, and, and so between not repeating fingers and, uh, and trying to stay in position, we have some fingering patterns that kind of land the guitar really well. Uh, and there are five that lay great and a bunch that don't. So we're not going to learn the ones that don't feel great on the guitar anyway. We're going to focus on these five. So let's begin. The first one on your handout, the one on the upper left corner, is called the 6-2, meaning I start on the sixth string with my second finger. Now, if I'm in the second position, that note that I'm playing is a G. So this is going to be one of five different G major scales. Okay? Now, the fingerings, uh, actually I don't have the fingerings on the, the diagram for you, and that's because, again, we already know what finger plays what fret. What I do have on the diagram are R for root, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then another root. Like Sometimes you'll, people will call this the eighth note of the scale because it's the octave, but because I'm going to continue and play another octave of the scale, 
I'm going to call this root 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, root again, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, root again. Okay? Make sense? Okay, so let's play this together slowly. Okay? And the cool thing about this is you're a good musician, and so you already know how a major scale is supposed to sound, which is great. So if you play a wrong note, your ear will probably say, nah, that was wrong. So here we go. One, two, ready, go. Now what I like to do is when I get to my tonic, my root, my octave here, I like to go up and play the extra note if I can, and then I come down the same way. But what I like to do is if I have an extra note at the bottom, below the root, in this case the seventh, I'll play that too, but I'll always begin and end on the root for now. Now that's going to change later, but for now that's what we're going to do. Okay? So this is a two octave scale. I never call this the G fingering. I call it the 6-2 fingering for the reasons that we just discussed earlier. Six string, second finger is the G scale. Now, could I move this up and use the same fingering to play in the key of A? Of course I could. I could play in B flat up here. I could play in C up here. So some students go, okay, I'm just going to learn one of these, not all five, because then I can just move it around the neck. But the problem with that is, in jazz music, the, the keys change all the time, and they change really quickly. So if you only know one way to play in any given key, you're always going to be moving around the neck, not maybe not in a way that you want to do that. So you really do need to learn the five of these, and it's not as hard as you might think. Okay, so that's the first one, okay? The second one on the page is called the 6-1, and this 6-1 is kind of weird. Uh, I'm going to show you all of these in the key of G, just for convenience sake. This one begins in the second, excuse me, in the fourth position, so my first finger is covering the fourth fret, but it actually begins with what we call a stretch note, meaning there's a note that's not included in the fourth fret position. And that's okay. Um, what we're going to do is just reach out with our first finger and grab that note here on the third fret and then come right back into our position. And we're going to try to not move our, I don't know if you can see this okay, I'm in fourth position, but when I play that first note, I try to just stretch my finger and not move my whole hand into the third position because then I'm kind of out of place for all my other notes. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to play this for you slowly. And the fingering is very easy uh, to start off. It's one stretch, two, four, stretch one, two, four. Now, no stretch one, or just a regular first finger. One, two, four. And another stretch one. And when I come back down, I've got a stretch. No stretch here, but on the fifth string, I stretch my first finger, and on the fourth, uh, sorry, the sixth string, I stretch my finger once again. So let's play that all together. One, two, here we go. No stretch. So that's two of the five. So we're almost halfway there. The next one I want to show you is called the five four fingering. It starts on the fifth string with my fourth finger. And again, I'm going to always start on the note G for the purposes of this video because I'm showing you everything in the key of G today. Right? I like this one because there's no stretches. It's pretty easy to play. So let me show it to you. Okay? I always start on the root. So I've got my root here. And I hope you can see that I'm, I try to keep my fingers close to the fingerboard. I try to not do this and you know move them all around and I'm, just try to keep them really close. I always play those extra low notes and then I always come back to the root. Okay? And I think you've got the hang of it now, so I'll go a little bit faster. The next one is a 5-2. It begins on the fifth string with my second finger, also on a G. And this has a stretch note on the high, on the E string. You have to stretch uh, one, one note, or, or one fret rather. Okay, so here's a G scale. This is the 5-2 fingering. 
One, two, three, go. Now, when I get to my high E string, I stretch that one fret, then I go right back into position, there's my stretch note. And then I'm gonna continue down and grab some of these lower notes. I might even grab that low in there, but I always go back to G, okay? And there's only one more left, and that's the 6-4. And in the key of G, that's pretty high up on the neck. It begins on the sixth string on a G, but on the 15th fret G, not on the uh, third fret G, but the 15th fret. And there's a stretch uh, note in this scale too, and it's with your little finger, right? With your pinky finger. So, and on the fourth string. I'll show you when we get there. One, two, here we go. Third finger, stretch your pinky. One, two, four, one, three. I go back down. Stretch here. How that works all right so when you practice these um well before i tell you that one thing you'll probably notice is if you look at how i've given you these scales on the handout that you have you'll see that they keep moving up the neck so it's almost like i can play in the key of g here i can play in the key of g here and here and here and here so there's really no spot on the guitar neck where i am not totally comfortable in the key of g and of course, I practice these in all the other keys as well, all 12 major keys, you have to do all of those, okay? So here's how you might practice that. Um, when you're learning these, I recommend that you play them as quarter notes with all down strokes and really focus on getting the right fingers. If you go, oh, that was a wrong note, you don't wanna play any wrong notes. So if you play a wrong note and you correct it, you're fine, just keep going. Okay, after a period of time, once you know where all the notes are, you can start to play them a little faster. A couple of things are important here. Always use a metronome, always, always. I like to put the metronome click on beats two and four. Other musicians like to have it on all four beats. Some even like to put it on beats one and three, but I like two and four. I don't have my metronome handy, so I'm not gonna use that right now. But if I did, I would go click, two, three, here's eight notes. It depends. Um, I've been doing this for a long time now. I'm, I'm an older guy, but when I was learning, when I was first learning them, I might do them 10, 20 times in a row at the same metronome just to really get it under my fingers. There's a term called muscle memory, and that's how you you remember how things feel. So when you're in the middle of a solo where you get kind of excited or maybe nervous or whatever, your fingers kind of know where to go on their own. It's it's pretty cool when that happens. Okay, so you practice those a whole bunch. Um, then I would take in the key of G, my next one up, and I would play this one. I'm, I use alternate picking. We'll do another video about picking technique down the road, but I kind of like alternate picking when I'm starting off with something like this. And I go up and I go down. And then I take the next one. This is the 5-4 the one. And sometimes um, I'll go, if, if I have a lot of time to practice in a certain day, I'll, I'll start with a key, let's say G, and I'll go up all five G fingering patterns, and then I'll go down with all five. And then I'll take the next key in the circle. Now the way I teach this, and was taught this in a jazz context, is after G comes C, then comes F, then comes B flat, and so on. You may have learned it a different way. In another video, we'll discuss the pros and cons of the different ways of learning that circle. But for the time being, the order that I suggest you practice these in is, you can begin on whatever key you want, but let's say you were to begin on the key of C, right? Here's the key of C. I would start with a five, two, if I were gonna practice in the key of C, because that's the lowest position that I can play in on the guitar, right? And I would practice my C scale, 
and I'd go up and down all in the key of C. Then I would take the next key in the circle, which for me is F, and so on. And if you want to jot this down, here's the order that I practice them in and that I recommend you practice them in. Ready? Here we go. C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, which is sometimes called C sharp, G flat, which is sometimes called F sharp, B, E, A, D, G, and then after G, back to C again, and you're home. Now, can you practice all the positions in all the keys every single day? Maybe not. I mean, it depends on how much time you have to practice. So you should keep a little notebook by your music stand where you practice and make a note. Maybe it's Monday and today you got through the keys of C, F, and B flat. Great. What would be the one you would start with the next time you practiced? Probably E flat. That's the next key. So you're learning that very important circle at the same time that you're learning your scales. Okay? So, quick review. Uh, position playing, we try to keep our finger in one basic position. Uh, a lot of students go, yeah, but I want to be, I want to run up and down the neck because that's really cool to do. And it is really cool to do. And we'll get to that, but not in this video. Okay? And we're going to eventually try to cover all the keys um, in all the positions on the neck. All right? And that's a great uh, starting off video. We're going to have more videos in the, in the uh, sequence using the major scale. We're also going to cover many of the other scales and modes in jazz as well. But this is a good way to get started. So I hope you guys uh, enjoy this and keep practicing, and I'll see you on the next video. This is Mike Dana. See you later. Bye.